in Australia. The red brick, it's part of our strata environment. In fact, it's the most common building, uh, the red bricks and the white brick walk-ups. These are the most populous strata and apartment buildings in Australia. And now everyone's been into these um, older style apartment blocks that have these pneumatic push bush buttons to turn on the lights on the ground floor, the, the first floor and the second floor at the same time. And whenever anyone comes out on their floor and hits the push button, all three lights go on at the same time. Well, it doesn't have to be that way anymore. Um, uh, a project, you can get your electrician in, uh, uh, get him to remove the pneumatic uh, push buttons, put uh, some metal plates like this over the top of them, and upgrade the lights in the, um, on each floor with a motion sensored LED light. Now, particularly at this time of coronavirus where people don't want to be touching buttons, you're coming home, shopping into hands. Um, if I'm only going to the first floor, I only need the ground floor light and the first floor light to go on. I don't need the second floor light to uh, come on because I'm not actually going to go up to the second floor. So um, that's the benefit of, um, of moving uh, away from, you know, this pneumatic push button, which has been a staple in our older style apartment buildings and moving to the new lighting technology. Another thing we should just mention, um, back in uh, the early noughties, uh, the nineties and the noughties, uh, quite often uh, fluorescent lights were in banks on a circuit in the car park area and there was one motion sensor, one of those infrared motion sensors that would bring on the whole bank of lights in one hit, keep it on for a, you know, a minute or two and then it would drop off. Now, this actually turned out to be a disaster in terms of maintenance costs because that was blowing fluorescent tubes uh, regularly. If you've got this sort of set up in your uh, car park, we would recommend that you actually now decommission the sensor bank uh, system, the circuit, and just move to individual motion sensors on each light in the car park. That's a higher resolution model, um, which will give you higher energy savings over the long term. So another thing that we'll say goodbye to today is the car park sensor bank. Now, we do have to talk about compliance. And uh, this is AS, 1680 car park entry and exit is one area that's not done well in our apartment buildings. And I'll just walk you through the scenario um, behind this. So you can see a diagram here. At any car park entry or exit, it's actually the most dangerous place as a driver comes out of the dark car park into the bright sunlight where they may hit a pedestrian or a child on a bike uh, riding past that uh, as the garage door gate goes up and they exit the building. So this is a, a national standard. Uh, basically, uh, we spoke about Lux earlier on and uh, during the day, uh, from the outside coming in, you actually need 800 Lux for the first 15 meters of the, the car park entrance and then 160 Lux for the next four meters during the day to meet this compliance standard. And that's a transition zone to allow the driver's eyes to move from the bright uh, driving condition outside into the darker area. Now at nighttime, uh, the, the standard is you need 160 lux um, for the first 19 meters as you enter or exit. Now there are specific solutions um, that can be bored um, that have a PE cell, a photoelectric cell that sits outside uh, and connects to a wireless network, a communication network between the lights in this zone and uh, meets the, this government uh, requirement. Um, invariably, we find a lot of strata buildings haven't done this project. If you want to go and get your New South Wales energy saving scheme rebates on a lighting project, it's mandatory to do this at the car park entrance. It adds more expense to the project, but I'm just going to give you a little tip um, to try and get uh, this passed through your strata committee. And it goes like this. Um, heaps of strata buildings around Australia have 
uh, the curtain roller doors that go up and down uh, for the cars to enter and exit the building. Now, uh, quite often, the buildings uh, are having cars hit these curtains maybe once a year, once every two years, and getting a bill for two, three, four thousand dollars each time to repair the damaged roller door. Now, if you had better lighting um, uh, in that area coming up to the roller door, um, you would actually reduce the amount of times that you're going to damage the roller door. And the business case for doing this compliance project is actually not about saving money in, in, that, uh, in lower power. It's about saving on the number of times uh, that a, a car drives into that roller door. Uh, in my own building, uh, an NRMA vehicle did it and hit, uh, that was helping someone inside the basement car park and, and the NRMA vehicle even took out the garage door on the way out. So um, even the best drivers have this problem. Um, so that's AS 1680 compliance. Now for something uh, that's uh, at more the cutting edge, um, we'll talk about a wireless emergency lighting network for your apartment building. Now, imagine um, all the emergency lights inside your apartment building and the fire stairs in the basement car park connected through a radio network so that they can communicate to each other. And then uh, that radio network connected to the internet so that uh, someone can actually look at a mobile phone app or a web page and uh, do an instant emergency lighting test uh, for the entire building without having to walk around. Now, a couple of uh, innovations that are in this particular space include um, one of the challenges in basement car parks with motion sensors was the motion sensors didn't trigger fast enough for um, cars so basically cars would drive past the light before the motion sensor would activate and the light would flare up. With one of these uh, wireless networks, um, the first light in a series detects the car coming and radios ahead to the lights that are further up the thoroughfare and brings them up to full strength before the car drives through. So that's um, one use of what people are calling the internet of light. I'll give you another scenario. Um, if you're in the fire escape and uh, you're entering the fire escape uh, on the fourth floor, um, the light on the fourth floor can radio to the light on the third floor and the fifth floor and tell them to both brighten up to full strength. And that's called dynamic branch prediction. At that point, the, the lighting network doesn't know whether you're going to walk up or down, but it's just brightening both lights um, assuming that you'll go to either one of them. And from after you've made that decision, it'll keep going up the chain, um, you know, illuminating lights before you get to it. So uh, that's uh, something that's, that's a little bit more on the, the cutting edge. Uh, this has been installed into apartment buildings, but it's not um, prevalent. So it's, you know, some leader um, strata buildings have installed this type of network. Um, but many more will in the future. And uh, for outdoor lighting, we'll just have a little chat about the combination of a daylight sensor and a motion sensor uh, put together. So um, in the past, we used to have these photoelectric cells. You can see one on the diagram here from HPM, the 170 series. And uh, that would trigger a circuit of lights to come on uh, when dusk uh, you know, approached at dawn, it would uh, trigger the lights to go off. Now, the trend is now away from these because lights can have their own daylight sensor on board. And so uh, the combination of a daylight sensor with a motion sensor LED light will mean that that light won't illuminate at all during the day. When dusk arrives, that light will come on to its low power 20% mode. And then when it detects someone walking towards it, it will flare up to 100% power, maybe for a minute and a, and a half, before then dropping back down to um, its low power mode throughout the night. And then when dawn comes again, that light uh, will be completely off for the rest of the day. So that's an example where 
um, the things that used to be components, such as uh, a infrared sensor or a photoelectric cell, have all been shrunk and miniaturized and put into the individual lighting units now. So, uh, and that gives you more flexibility in designing a solution. Thank you.